let's talk about things. All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the bi-weekly community call. Excited to be back, as always. Um, we have like a lot of lot of updates to cover today, actually. I don't know if any of you have noticed, but the snapshot and the Commonwealth has been popping as of late. So we'll run through all of the normal stuff, run through some of those and kind of outline uh, what some of these partnerships are, what they mean. And uh, yeah, I mean, things are, are looking really good for, for Hidden Hand. So to kick it all off, let's see, let's start with, actually, let's just go ahead and start with, with the governance stuff we've had. I don't even know how many proposals go onto Snapshot over the past couple of weeks. Uh, some of the big ones include, you know, launching the Timeless Hidden Hand Market, uh, launching the Camelot Hidden Hand Market, which I'm pretty sure both of those we covered uh, in the last community call, so we could skip. Um, the whitelist idol for Hidden Hand was just whitelisting idol as a bribing token. Um, the OTC bribe from Sentiment in exchange for VFXS votes uh, from the Redacted Treasury also passed. Uh, maybe we could talk about that one a little bit funky because I know uh, there were some people who were curious about like why we're we're doing this and like what you know what other opportunities could exist for VFXS and so on and so forth. So I'll let you touch on that one a little bit. Sure, sure. Um, so as as many of you know. Uh, FXS is kind of like one of the positions that we were building up in the early days through bonds. Um, and so we have a uh, significant amount of uh, FXS in the form of uh, CVX FXS, which earns uh, rewards um, for being in the, in the LP. And we also have some uh, FXS, which we've uh, four year locked. Um, so I think we have like 200,000 FXS uh, in that format. Um, and the, the, the advantage of having the FXS is that you can, um, you can vote for uh, FXS gauges, which is similar to uh, curve gauges. So by voting for an FXX gauge, that gauge will receive FXS emissions. And FXS gauges are a bit different than curve gauges where, you know, curve gauges are on curve pools. So that's pretty simple. Um, but FXS gauges are kind of built on top of um, various different kind of uh, places where FRAX and FXS is available. So for example, for uh, certain FRAX uh, BP or FXS uh, pools, um, in various places, you can direct emissions there. Um, also, you can kind of direct uh, FXS emissions to, I think, Aave and stuff like that. So that's the kind of appeal of having voting power for uh, VFXS is that you can direct F FXS emissions um, for for that. Um, so there are markets for VFXS bribes. Uh, Hidden Hand is one of those markets. Um, traditionally, uh, the VEFXS bribe market hasn't been as active as, say, for example, Balancer or Curve or Convex. Um, and I think that's just kind of due to the kind of tokenomics of uh, FXS, which isn't kind of as uh, as designed or as mature as, as Curve or Convex. So anyways, we have these votes. Um, there's not many kind of places for us to get bribes. Uh, we had been talking to Badger and we had been voting for one of their pools. And anyways, Timeless, you know, approached us and put up this proposal saying that, you know, uh, they're interested in um, OTC bribing our FXS votes um, for some, uh, for a dollar amount of sentiment tokens in the future. So sentiment, uh, if I understand properly, they're not liquid tokens yet. So the idea is that we would get a dollar amount of uh, sentiment tokens at, a at, at, I think the private round valuation or something like that. Um, and these uh, tokens would be vested in the future, which means that we would get them over time. Um, and, you know, I think a lot of people were like wondering, oh, why this isn't a great deal. You know, we don't have the tokens now, etc. But I think the main thing to recognize is that there's not that many people bribing FXS. And uh, sentiment, <clears throat> an interesting project, and uh, you know they're interested in bribing. So you know it's kind of uh, maximizing the kind of productivity of those votes, because um, otherwise they'll just kind of sit idle. Um, 
Um, so there's yeah, the TLDR and, um, for you chatting for two minutes straight. I'll, uh, I'll jump in there also. Uh, can you hear me all right? Or... Yeah, we, we hear you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, me and, me and Karin, who's in the, in the audience, were the ones having this discussion. Um, it spawned around, it, the proposal spawned around an initial discussion to create a relationship where maybe people can use Pyrex tokens um, as collateral on sentiment and explain what that would look like. And I think like this was the first like easy win that we could establish as partners. Um, so for that reason, I'm happy it went through. I think that would be like a really cool use case for the Pyrex tokens. Um, the other one was that they wanted to use the hidden hand market, and I think they plan on using it after the token comes out. So, um, yeah, basically, like, uh, I think it's more one of those things where if you remember the current sort of, like, incentive program we have for the FXS hidden hand market, um, this is a way for them to, like, kick off um, them using the hidden hand market uh, just, like, after their token comes out, right? We have to make some sort of special special arrangement, if that makes sense. Um, so, yeah. Uh, the other thing, just since we're on the topic of FXS, um, Badger is going to lay low on the on the Frax votes and shift their attention to Aura, which is also beneficial to us, um, which opened up the door for us to allocate more of our FXS votes since they were all going towards Badger, um, which will be allocated to Temple now since Temple, as you guys might have saw, is doing, you know, I think like $5,000, $10,000 bribes on the FXS hidden hand market. So the new allocation for FXS will go from 100% Badger to 50% uh, Temple, 50% uh, Sentiment, Fax VP. Dope. So anybody? All right, cool. No questions about that. Um, awesome. So that covers that vote. The next one uh, that we hadn't covered yet is like the whitelist tokens for the bunny hidden hand market. Pretty straightforward. Uh, I think the timeless team sent over a... A list of tokens that potentially expressed interest in uh, bribing on on timeless hidden, or on the bunny hidden hand market. So had to get all of those passed so they can get added. Uh, the other big governance thing that happened. That I was... think I think I'm um, sorry. Let yeah, me go add ahead. Something go ahead. Um, we, I don't think we brought this up on the last community call. Um, as you guys know, we want to push towards uh, on chain governance by the end of the year. And that means decentralizing all operations. So you guys might have saw uh, earlier, we uh, turned the hidden hand reward claim into an automated process rather than a manual one. And also the whitelisting for the tokens that you can bribe with is also going, I guess, decentralized via snapshot instead of us sort of just like handling it over Telegram. So you'll notice that there'll be a lot of new um, <clears throat> RFFs and and rips to just like uh, whitelist tokens to bribe on in hand. And that was uh, done on purpose, I guess, not just done out of nowhere. Dope. Yeah. And one more thing I almost uh, forgot about that's on the Commonwealth at the moment is this, uh, this proposal to deploy a hidden hand reward vault. So uh, basically the idea here is that uh, we are asking governments to deploy a smart contract that will essentially unionize gas costs for reward claims and zaps into a single target from hidden hand. I think this is uh, something that stems from a lot of requests from the community to save on hidden hand gas costs because sometimes, you know, you get uh, quite a few tokens that maybe you don't want or you don't want to go sell on your own and you'd rather just be able to uh, zap into any particular token. I dropped it in the town hall text chat for those wanting to kind of go look at it um the options right now are like of course no do not deploy the reward vault the other options uh involve you know yes deploy the the vault but also uh specify you know what the target token should should be so is there anything else we want to add on this never i don't know if you want to touch on the dev side of this or like yeah. anything like that i mean it only makes sense to target one token uh right that's the only way that it, it kind of works <laughs> so probably thinking usdc or eth or whatever uh, there will be a fee attached to it. Um, yeah, since it's not, it's a route, it's a, a improvement in life, and you know, don't want to push. Uh, it's another revenue source for the DAO. Um, yeah, it's another uh, thing feature that you know makes us different and kind of beats the competition. Uh, as there's been other bright markets coming up lately, but yeah, we have to keep on innovating or we die. <laughs> 
right. Quite a, all right. We're being morbid this morning, but yeah, <laughs> it's a pretty straightforward proposal. I think, uh, I, I guess it'll probably go on snapshot <laughs> in the next couple of, in the next couple of days. <laughs> and, uh, as far as like the, the last thing I wanted to cover on the governance front was this, uh, synapse proposal in case you missed it. This is actually a, uh, sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm going to add one more thing. Yeah, go ahead. Um, part of that, uh, the, but after we posted the proposal, I think we either made the change or we're about to make the change on adding a fee tier two, which would have the same hidden hand fee split. So 50% to RL lockers, 50% to the treasury. Um, so if you claim the rewards, obviously there's no fee taken there, but if you choose to use the zap function, then part of the harvest goes towards um, RL and the treasury. Cool. Yeah, so the last thing I wanted to touch on, like I was saying, is this uh, Synapse proposal. This is a pretty big proposal, honestly. Um, it's kind of long, so I recommend everybody kind of go check it out to get the, the full picture of, of what's happening here. But essentially, uh, Synapse and Aura have sort of worked out this, this partnership that involves Synapse uh, moving all of their incentivized liquidity from SushiSwap to, to Balancer and uh, diverting all of those liquidity uh, mining incentives to Aura bribes through through Hidden Hand. And the, the sort of final tally here on what that what that looks like is uh, whenever the full uh, migration is complete, <clears throat> they will be bribing around 35,000 uh, SIN tokens per week to uh, BL Aura holders through Hidden Hand. And the, I guess, current dollar value of that, I don't know, let me see if I can do some quick math. Um, Obviously, this is subject to change through the market, but right now it looks like that's around $28,000 a week from Synapse. And what's pretty crazy about this transition is that basically um, they are spending a lot through Hidden Hand, but it's still less than what they're spending on on Sushi liquidity mining incentives. So just kind of one of these, like uh, they get a huge increase in, in efficiency per dollar. Um, by by switching over to balancer and and bribing BL Aura holders, so pretty cool, um, pretty big win for for Hidden Hand, big win for Aura, uh, big wins all around for the sort of redacted Aura balancer balancer partnership. So anything else anybody up here wants to add to that? Good, cool, good, cool. So. Those are those are all of the governance updates, I believe. I don't think I missed anything. So we can kind of move forward to uh, what's been going on um, in the rest of the ecosystem. So Hidden Hand, I mean, it's the same update every two weeks, chugging along as normal. Um, had a had a, I think you know February was like a really really good month for for Hidden Hand. Hopefully March is equally as good. It looks like last week we had around $697,000 in bribes. So business as usual. And this week we have around 256,000 in bribes. So everything is looking good there. Um, adding a lot of new partners, adding new bribers, getting more, getting more bribes. All of that is looking up. And of course we have quality of life improvements coming along. Right. And there was the uh, timeless FIP 19 ish oh, proposal. Shit. Yeah, that's actually a good point. Um, let me see if I can pull that up really quickly. Uh, Commonwealth. Do you remember the details of it off the top of your head? I can. Okay, I, I'll try to restate it, but if I make a mistake, uh, it's not false advertising. So, <laughs> um, Basically, uh, as I understand it, uh, <clears throat> when people are playing Bunny or Timeless or any of those markets, you are farming what they call an O token. Uh, I believe, yeah, OLIT, right? <clears throat> if you want to recognize the liquidity on OLIT, you have to put up 50% of the value, 50% of the spot value to redeem it. So uh, over time, since the launch, people have been farming, obviously, a lot of LIT. They just launched. And if people want to get the normal token to put into the V token or to sell it or whatever the case is, you know, if one LIT is worth $1, then you have to put up 50 cents. <clears throat> The proposal is that um, the OLIT that is redeemed coming from the bunny pools uh, will be repurposed into what is similar to the BIP-19. So if uh, a ton of fees are getting generated or like OLIT fees are getting generated via 
the aura pool on Bunny, um, then what will happen is the, the ETH that goes into the contract to redeem that OLIT will be put right back into Hidden Hand, which you might have seen was the cause for like that proposal to like whitelist WEF and all of these tokens and stuff. Um, so, you know, that was really, the, the, that first time the BIP19 proposal passed, it was really important for just um, Hidden Hand overall uh, to kickstart the balancer market where, you know, balancer themselves was like bribing the protocol and, and getting the flywheel going. So hopefully we can um, <clears throat> duplicate that, um, duplicate that success with timeless via the OLED redemptions. Sweet. Yeah, that should be close enough. Um, anybody else can go dig up the proposal and back check. But yeah, I think that's all sounds right. So we have a question around hidden hand. So uh, Nightwind asked, uh, aura holders can for a short while now vote for governance proposals even when delegating their VL aura to hidden hand for bribes. Is redacted planning to be involved in governance voting at aura, uh, like for Dinero, for example? As a holder of Butterfly and aura both, I would like to support the cartel with my aura governance votes uh, by delegating to a redacted address. Don't think I'm the only one thinking about this. So is this... Mm -hmm. uh, 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 we do, we will play the governance game. We already kind of play the governance games at Aura, uh, right at Hidden Hand, uh, where, but it's more like bribe centric and kind of optimizing bribes. But as a DAO, we have, we don't have a gauge up on balancer yet. Uh, but once we do, uh, we will be playing those games. Cool. So hopefully that answers that. Oh, there was like a follow up to that question, which was, uh, after writing this question, something came to mind. Hidden Hand has aura bribes for gauges. What about bribes for governance proposals? Um, I think this is something we talked about in the past. I don't know about the technical side of it, how feasible it is, but there's like a ethical uh, dilemma there, I think, as far as like spinning up a bunch of uh, markets for like bribing governance proposals that I don't know if that's like a game we fully mm -hmm. want to play. Yeah, exactly. Uh, technically, it's, it's the same. Uh, we actually kind of support it, but we just don't push it up. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's there's some times it makes sense. Like the I remember when I think it was Rari or uh, Faye had that proposal, and Ohm just basically said to pay out people who voted for the I think it was the uh, repayment for for bad debt. Yeah. Uh, so there are times it makes sense, but it's just it's not the money maker, and it's just no, it's gray waters. So like we just stick to the. I think the one where, like, you know, where most of the money will flow through, which is uh, incentives. Yeah. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully that covers that. It's just like a weird, yeah, like never said, like a weird gray area. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, I think like one of one of the things we like to do with with Hidden Hand is work really closely with teams on making sure that Hidden Hand is kind of like this mutually beneficial marketplace. But if we're if we're, we're like contributing to malicious governance behavior in a project's ecosystem, then that feels like a very one-sided uh, relationship. So probably not ideal. Cool. All hidden. Hand. So when, when are we getting a gauge on balancer? Uh, yeah. Sammy said prob probably with the De Niro launch. We'll, uh, we'll update you guys as always. I mean, we're, that type of stuff is constantly, constantly evolving. And the reason we don't even have one now, I think was more of like a, implementation detail with uh the whatever they're called the flex loans thing um so it's not like we didn't want one but yeah cool uh if that's all for hidden hand pyrex i don't think we have any big pyrex updates i think we are currently working on some quality of life improvements for pyrex and the user experience but i don't know if anybody up here can touch on this. uh we actually deployed a new feature on Pyrex this week, uh, which is basically uh, currently within Pyrex CVX, users uh, who are LPing or the treasury who's LPing doesn't cannot receive CRV or convex rewards. But uh, we built kind of a wrapper token where that's going to be the main LP. So it's we call it LP LPX CVX. It's a new token. Yeah, confusing, but it's uh, from a user experience no one will ever notice it so we'll just have like a ui up where people can lp through there and uh, basically it's like a wrapper token where we lp CV, uh, we do lp cvx with cvx uh, on curve so that our px cvx and our treasury 
uh, will still be yielding. Uh, and yeah, we're still thinking about strategies of how to use that. Could be you know bribes back to the pool to kind of grow that the, the liquidity there. Uh, but yeah, it's just more cap efficient for us to, uh, for us and other users that like you know actual um, LPs will now also receive uh, convex bribes. Yeah, and we haven't had um, as much of a problem as we thought we would regarding uh, PXCVX liquidity, but this should like strategically um, you know help increase liquidity without having to throw a butterfly at it. So um, that's really good. Also, do you want to talk about the Maybe funky. You want to talk about the GMX rewards that would accrue to people in the LP and where we came to with that with Camelot. Right. Yes, that's that makes sense. I mean, the the reason why we are launching LPXCVX is essentially to be more efficient with the PXCVX in the pool. So previously, um, the PXCVX in the pool, um, the rewards were accrued to the the pool contract, which um, cannot claim the rewards, um, and this uh, implementation allows us to claim the rewards on that. And if you have a hundred thousand uh, PXCVX in the pool and you're getting five cents around, that's like five k around. So uh, quite handy to have. And kind of on a related note, uh, from that learning of uh, working on uh, convex for the PX GMX implementation, this was built in. Um, so we have a, there is a function in the contracts which allows um, whitelisted contracts to uh, claim rewards for certain addresses. And the idea behind this is that where PX GMX may be in certain contracts which cannot claim the rewards, um, these rewards can be claimed by uh, another uh, entity, user, whatever. And the implementation of this is, for example, for the Camelot PX uh, GMX ETH pool, uh, the PX GMX in the pool earns rewards. So if you're LPing in that contract, the PX GMX is earning rewards. The Camelot contract can't claim those rewards, so those rewards will be claimed and then deposited back into the Camelot pool as additional rewards. So on Camelot Nitro pools, um, you, uh, it, there's an ability for um, additional tokens to be deposited, um, and those uh, tokens are uh, distributed as uh, yield, whatever, to the LPs. Um, so basically, um, if you LP in the PX GMX ETH pool, you will get the Camelot rewards, the Grail rewards, and the uh, PX GMX yield um, as well. Um, and I think this is something that a lot of people have been bringing up. Um, and yeah, working with Camelot is just the simplest way to kind of distribute those rewards. Cool. Um... Let's see, what else did we want to touch on? Okay, so yeah, the, the other thing I wanted to share that's Pyrex related is that Figgy and Magnus recorded a tutorial on using Pyrex GMX. And basically, yeah, they, they covered everything you'd ever need to know about interfacing with Pyrex GMX. So make sure you watch that, check it out, and yeah. Uh, let's see, we have some questions about the, uh, I guess, new PX CVX. Uh, CVX pool. Uh, just a couple of questions like where will the new, new pool be? It'll be on curve. Uh, what would the change be for the new pool? So it'll be the exact same parameters for the pool. The only the only difference is that instead of having PXCVX in the pool, you have this other token called LPXCVX, which can be exchanged for PXCVX. So the, the, basically the idea is like um, the PXCVX is in the curve contract currently um, every kind of uh, two weeks, there's a snapshot taken to see who can get what rewards based on who owns the PXCVX because the curve contract can't claim it. Um, there's, there'll be an intermediate contract which takes PXCVX, issues LPXCVX, um, and then that LPXCVX will be in the pool. So it'll be an LPXCVX CVX pool. And the advantage is that the wrapper contract, which holds the PXCVX, 
will be able to claim the reward. So basically, it's just a additional layer on top. It doesn't change. The only tangible difference is that the PXCVX will have the rewards uh, claimable. By yeah, the and and to get away from all this, you know, token retardedness, uh, greens and wheels have actually built the UI to do the swaps. So, like for a user experience, it's it's the same. Uh, you yeah. can swap where you are. Exactly. I think that's the really cool thing is that say you wanted to buy through the pool, there'll be a UI on the website which allows you to swap directly from PXCVX to CVX or the other way around. Um, and it takes care of all the abstraction of wrapping it, unwrapping it. Whereas if you went through the curve pool yourself, you would say you have CVX, so you buy LPX CVX, then you have LPX CVX, then you have to go on the UI and then unwrap it. Whereas if you use the UI on the Parix site, it'll just take care of all of that. Thanks to the magic from greens. Shout out to greens. Um, cool. I think that should cover most of the big Pyrex updates. I think for um, both of them too, uh, I don't think we'll share previews yet, but um, there's been a lot of people that have been complaining about the scalability of both the Pyrex UI and the Hidden Hand UI. And um, I saw it last week, it's pretty exciting. Um, or I saw it this week, sorry. Some um, updates we're making, some revamps we're making to like the UI, giving it like a new feel. Uh, hidden hand, I think, making it look like uh, giving it the website it deserves, and then Pyrex side, you know, making sure it's a bit more friendly to people outside of the curve ecosystem, so that we can scale it uh, beyond just convex. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Yep, yep, and yeah, I, I mean, I think the the other point to make on that regard is like the number of devs uh, that are being onboarded behind the scenes is up only. So we're getting even more devs that we can make sure never get to sleep and only work 24 seven so that we can keep delivering more quality of life improvements to everybody across the board. And greens is their ring. Yeah, everyone, everyone welcome uh, Rafa, I see him in the chat here. Welcome Xerox Rafa to the team. Cool. Um, I, re I really hope that's, I really hope that's what this goes away. They're just, yes, <laughs> not some random, not some random. <laughs> shout out to the random or potentially Rafa. Um, cool. So I guess like now that a lot of the big updates are out of the way, we can open it up to sort of general question type stuff. Like I mentioned, we can keep this one a little shorter today. We don't have a guest on or anything like that. And I have a hard stop at the hour. So somebody asked, um, What's the status of bear chain and what does that mean to redacted? Will hidden hand play a role from day one? I don't think this is the right place to give like a status on bear chain, uh, but maybe like, I mean, I, I don't know how much like Sammy and co can say about like what the relationship is or anything like that, but we like the, we like the bears. Like, I don't know. I don't know how much more can really be. Yeah, uh, no, we'll, we'll save that later for when they're ready to like, talk about yeah. this. And stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then Figgy is continuing to drop some uh, some community resources. Make sure to check those out in the town hall text chat. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, we have this community newsletter that goes out uh, every other week on a pretty consistent cadence. It's written by uh, Eth Hunter and Figgy, and they make sure to cover pretty much everything they they possibly can in the in the redacted ecosystem and our partner ecosystems. So. Make sure to check that out. One just went out, uh, I think yesterday or the day before, I can't really remember, on uh, Metropolis, which is a governance framework we are uh, working working towards. And as you've all seen lately, we are becoming a lot more active on the governance front. That way, uh, all of you can kind of get used to the processes so we can get used to the processes, et cetera. So it's been pretty cool. It's been awesome to see everybody engaging with the votes. Um, how come Olympus got 10% of tokens for free? What did they do to deserve it? Um, I don't know. I think, you know, they were kind of an early partner. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really know. I don't have like a solid answer for that. Good question. Maybe something we should think about a little bit more. Um, Colton, we need the info on this brutal week. Dude, I, I have no idea. I actually didn't know the market was uh, throwing up until like, we started the call and yeah, looks like 
market's not happy and I'm reading about banks blowing up or I th so I think Silvergate is in trouble, which is not great because of all of their like various crypto relationships. But then there was another one. I think it's like Silicon Valley bank or something like that apparently is having issues. And I think that, yeah, I think that bank is a lot bigger and not necessarily like crypto oriented, but I don't, I don't know like the details of what is going on there. So sounds not good to me. Uh, that banks are blowing up. So, um, yeah, Colton only follows thirty people on Twitter. So <laughs> his main his main source of truth is this this group. Yeah, I, I learn everything from these community calls. I get caught up. Uh, is Bitcoin going to die today? I mean, it it looks like it. It could very well die today. Like today could be the day. I don't know. Um. Let's see. To zero, yeah, that's what it seems like, man. Yeah, Satoshi, Satoshi's gonna wake up today from his nap. Yeah, he's gonna wake up and just nuke everything. Follow you on Twitter, bro. I, I, people, if you want me to follow you on Twitter, you have to like. Maybe we should spin up a bribe market for my Twitter follows. Like that would be, that's a good idea, and all the revenue goes to me to continue to fund my, uh, very extravagant, extravagant, uh, salary, and lifestyle. Because I do have a 16 bedroom mansion overlooking the water, so we need to make sure that is. You, you still have that well picture. Funded. You have that picture of the Richard Hart. Okay? Uh, wait, I don't the know. One, the one with the one with you <laughs> sitting on the two I don't know. I don't think I still have it. I think I got rid of it. That was Damn a good it. One. Yeah, I'll have to pull that out uh, for the next call. Let never you could stay anytime. There's 15 yeah. other bedrooms to. Uh, to pick from did someone say Can I bring kids? dude why do we have richard shart in the in the chat what is happening today no richard shart is always here and is active actually shout out to richard shart no no we're talking about richard hart we're not talking about you <laughs> oh man all right are yesterday there... i learned uh, yesterday i learned that hex was actually in the top 25 but the, the tracker sites, the tracker sites don't put it there. It's nuts. Uh, yeah, shout out to uh, Hex, I guess. I don't, are they still like, they're still going, I assume? Yeah, PXX coming soon. Yeah, we should launch that. Sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if people, if people are using it and locking it, and we might as well just get the bag, right? Yeah, hidden hand on Pulse Chain. Yeah. <laughs> Pulse chain expansion coming soon. Uh, yeah. Not following the look, guys. I don't follow people on Twitter because I would prefer to get my news from from Discord. Uh, wait, are we also running ETH PW? Yes, some Dinero up. Oh, so people want a Dinero update. Um, let's see. What can we say? Soon, TM. Uh, I really don't know. I, I mean, look, the the Dinero update that I would give today is the same one we gave last week. Is that like we're full speed ahead on development basically and making progress week after week. Um, things are looking up every, we have like multiple syncs a week, a week on Dinero internally and with the people we're working with to build it. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to, to add. I think eventually we, we, We'll get to a point where we feel like really comfortable uh, launching the sort of light paper and getting, uh, you know, getting governance feedback and all of that stuff. So, yeah, when the time comes, it'll it'll come. Uh, how long after Shanghai? I, you'll probably hear about what Dinero actually is and how it works before Shanghai. I would imagine. I don't think we're gonna wait until after necessarily. Uh, any update on BBC? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if we have an update from the last time we talked about it. Um, yeah, we're trying over there. Uh, are we getting first looks at the white paper? I mean, yeah, I think I think like you know the the, the thing is is that we will have to release the uh, light paper uh, for governance approval anyway. So those of you who are super active in the Discord and active participants in governance and such, like yeah, you'll you'll be able to see it kind of first. Um, Deserve a first look. Yeah, maybe maybe we announce it in the Discord before doing any sort of Twitter push. I would be I would be down for something like that. Um cool. Anything else? 
Anything anybody up on the stage wanted to share? Nothing, nothing on my end. I guess, uh, yeah, crazy week this week. Hope everyone's safe and uh, not depositing their money with yeah. Silicon Valley Bank. <laughs> yeah, keep your funds uh, safe, boo, please. Uh, need a joke. I mean, I guess. Um, I don't know who's going to tell it. Omnia's not up here. I don't think there's any joke tellers on the stage today. The joke. Yeah, the we'll do it next time. The joke today is, I guess, uh, Silicon Valley Bank. They're the joke of the day. They managed to blow up somehow. I don't have the joke. I'm not a joke teller. <laughs> Karn no says, jokes. look in the mirror, and that's the joke. So, GG's. Um, okay, cool. <laughs> we'll, we'll, kind of, we'll kind of wrap it up here. I mean, thanks, everybody, for taking the time to come hang out on this bloodbath of a Friday. We appreciate it, as always. Um, yeah, and we'll see you in two weeks. Peace out, everybody.